back. What's up, everybody? Binge and well done. Coming at you live on this beautiful corona-free day. Today is Saturday, March the 12th at 10.19 in the morning. How are you doing? So, professional fighter versus professional comedian. What do I mean? Well, let's get into it. You know, let, let's just do a little thought experiment about something, okay? And as you're exploring your thoughts, just try to keep up with what I'm saying, all right? Here's what I'm getting at. I was thinking to myself the other day, what would probably be easier to become if you had absolutely no athleticism or no uh, talent or no care about fighting or comedy, which one would be harder to be? Which one essentially would be harder? I went down this hole and I was thinking to myself, uh, you know, fighter this, fighter that, yeah, 100%. And then I just came to the realization of, of math. And, you know, I use math as like my ultimate um, uh, measurement, so to speak, with a, relatively everything that I do, okay? I'm really big into different metrics and measurements when I'm working my goals and success and stuff like that. But anyway, here's the thing. At the end of the goal, at the end of this, this whole thought, I started thinking to myself, how many professional fighters could I think of? And I thought of, you know, the Mike Tysons, the Muhammad, you know, like just the UFC fighters, boxers, uh, kickboxers, like whatever, you name it. And I thought about how many comedians I could think of. And I came up with a lot few. A lot fewer, right? You know, it's an interesting thing, uh, math and statistics in general, because what is the likelihood of winning the lottery? One out of however many. Million, billion, whatever, okay? However, if you have the winning lottery ticket, it's 100%. I heard one of the dumbest things the other day, and I'm, I'm coming back to my point about fighter versus comedian. Not fighting against each other, right? But you, you, you know, I already said that, so keep, anyway, keep going. Um, you know, I heard one of the dumbest things the other day, which is it was more you're more likely to get struck by lightning uh, or, or, or whatever, something like that, uh, four times before you could win the lottery once. That is ridiculous. That is one of the dumbest things ever. Because I don't ever hear about one person getting struck by lightning four times. <laughs> but you always hear about people winning the lottery. Right? And that's... It's a mathematical truth, okay? As far as winning the lottery in comparison to getting struck by lightning. So, whenever somebody says something... If you use math as like a measurement tool, you can always bring it back to reality and find, in my opinion, the truest answer. But when it comes to life, when it comes to work ethic, when it comes to being gifted, when it comes to actually passion and care and stuff like that, okay? Me and my life, that's when you're holding the lottery ticket, okay? That's when you've got that 100%. That's when you have that work ethic, okay? And unlike the lottery, it's no longer skill. But you're still gonna have different kind of obstacles. So what kind of obstacles does a, uh, a fighter have or an athletic, an athletic uh, professional athlete? What do they have? They have the other opponents. If, if they're on a field, if it's a, a, a team sport, okay? They have the clock, maybe it's counting down to zero. They got, you know, a certain amount of minutes to make their touchdown or whatever it is. If it's a one-on-one -on -one fight, they gotta fight the person in front of them and beat them. They gotta be more tactical, smart, uh, athletic, all, all sorts of, possibilities but in a beautiful way and I said this before athletics are, are the truest form and most purest form of uh, competition because the second you start stepping in the entertainment industry in a comedy or stuff like that you might have all certain you could be the best comedian ever okay and you could have, maybe maybe it's a networking thing. They got a lot of talentless people out there that are having comedy specials. They get other people to write the material. They had a following. They had a following before. Maybe they're on some, some uh, you know, sitcom 
or something like that. And they're already nationally and internationally known. So then they just decide they're going to get into comedy all of a sudden. Is it fair? Mathematically, yes. But is it fair for them to get writers and take the credit? No. You know, the audience of, of a comedian knows very little about not just the craft and decides when they're laughing consistently. Okay? But one of the purest forms of comedy is coming up with your own material. Now, I'm coming up to a point which is this. In my opinion, it is more difficult on paper to be a professional comedian than it is a professional fighter. And the reason why is because there's no there's no politics necessarily involved in fighting. Maybe with promotions and stuff like that, but when it comes to you versus someone else, okay, you can fight your way to the top, and I love that. I think it's beautiful. I think it's very poetic. It's very true to life and existence and, and nature and everything else. It's, it's literally poetic beauty, watching someone physically and metaphorically fight. But as in with many other things, if you fight for a position that's a job position, or maybe you are the smarter candidate, or the, the better educated, or, or the funnier, or whatever the circumstance might be, there's a lot of political powers, or uh, preferential treatment, or whatever, you name it, okay? It has nothing to do with your skill set, which are additional factors that athletics do not have. Which brings me to my conclusion. If you had no talent, and you wanted to be one or the other, statistically, you could work your way into being a professional world champion before you could be a world-class comedian. And that's it. That's how I came to the conclusion, you know? And that doesn't deter me in my path by any means, because in my life, I'm holding the winning lottery ticket. I know what I am. I know what I do, okay? It's not, me being a, a comedian isn't something that I turn on or off. It's who I am, right? My biggest goal of what I really need to do is I just have to network. And I realized that, you know, when I came here to Texas, I was only living here about a year before Corona happened. And uh, I sort of went like radio silent. Um, and then like two weeks into Corona, my Facebook, all the contacts, all the ticket sales, everybody that I had met went completely gone, okay? And I had to start all over, but it's okay because now I have a website, I came back, I bounced back from that, my material, my delivery, my timing, my writing, everything is just so much better. And it is the best thing that happened. So in boxing, they call it like a second wind, which is like when a fighter, say for example, is uh, maybe they're like, they're slowing down or something, maybe they're winning. Let's just say they're winning and they start slowing down. All of a sudden it's like they, they start to get like a second wave of momentum, you know? And uh, then they come back and, and or, or they continue to fight and they win and stuff like that. And that's how I essentially feel every single day. I'm so thankful and I'm so happy and I'm so excited to, to um, do comedy. This whole last week, I've really just been spent um, a lot of time just uh, really networking. You know, in this, in this industry, in this business, um, you, I, mathematically, I do not believe you can um, uh, succeed by yourself. And I know comedy is just you and a microphone, right? It's a bumpy road. Sorry about all the shakes if you're watching this on video. But anyway, um, but, you know, climb the ladder in comedy in, in all reality, I, I know now more than ever before, has to do with relationship building and networking and connectedness and unity. You're building a, um, a relationship with the bookers. You're building a relationship with the audience. You're building a relationship with your um, with your colleagues, you know, your comedian friends, if you want to call them that. Um, and I say it in, in a weird contextual way of comedian friends because they're, they're colleagues, you know, different people vying for one position and there's a, there's a limited amount of slots. You know, that's also where some of the politics can come from, right? Between favoritism and preferential treatment. But the reality is, is that you, you can't deny uh, greatness. 
So as I heard someone say once, and I already agreed with, but I'm just gonna repeat what they said, every time they do X, every time they do, uh, uh, th this is a, a rapper that actually said this, they're rapping to be the best rapper in the world. And that's exactly how I feel, but every line that I do comedy, I do every single line by line to be the best in the world. I have my own measurements that I'm not gonna get into of how I know I'm succeeding in every single line, minute, five minute set, section, etc. And I need that because to me personally, being so mathematical, I, I want to know that I have multiple benchmarks, small, large, big, big, short-term, long-term, duration-wise, etc. that I have, that I'm doing something in a certain frequency of success, you know? So, anyway, that's that. I hope this was an interesting listen, and um, if you agree with me, great. If you don't, tell me why not, you know? Just give me something to think about, you know? But I'm pretty sure I already thought about all the angles and the, and the opposing forces. You know, it's just, it's really fascinating if you think about that. Somebody, uh, just, I'll just end on this. There was a, um, uh, it was like a, a news reporter went to a college and they said, hey, what do you think about, um, it, it, had, it was something along the lines of like, uh, it was something along the lines of affirmative action to have an equal amount of every every type of ethnicity and all sorts of other stuff really or whatever uh an equal amount of guys an equal amount of girls or whatever throughout every single class and um their reasoning was because it would be more diverse that was the question in general and it was asked to multiple students almost a hundred percent of all the students said they thought it would be a good idea the problem is is that your test scores are not what nowadays, not being political, I'm just being honest. It was an interesting uh, little kind of an interview to watch because it was two questions and that was the first one. And all the college students said um, they think it would be good even if they were admitted with lower test scores into a college with other people, okay, that had to get certain test scores and they got in this school just based off their academics, all for the purpose of being equally diverse. And they said, okay, well, your football team is a winning football team. If you believe that, you should apply that on all principles, right? And they said, yeah. And they said, so what if we said there had to be, even if somebody outperformed somebody in athletics, okay, if they were all one whatever, you know, if it wasn't a diverse uh, group of body, but they all did that one goal, but instead of intellectually, they did it physically with athletics. And you still support that. And every single one of them knew that they messed up at that point. And they all were basically saying stuff along the lines of, well, that's different, it's, it's athletics. No, it's not. Performance is performance. If you put your performance into athletics, getting back to my original point, it's pure, it's poetic, it's beautiful. The second you start to involve intellect, then <laughs> that's when people stop being intellectual and they start being a lot more political, you know? And every single one of them, every single one of them changed their answer and they said, uh, no, I wouldn't want that. And they said, why not? And they said, because they'd have a losing football team. And then it wasn't really a follow-up question, it was more like a statement. And they all pretty much agreed that maybe everyone going into college, okay, and you can apply the college towards, you know, getting a job, a presidential position, a political uh, employment, whatever, okay, should be based off of hard work and not anything but that. So that's the beauty of, uh, of athletics. And that's why I profession I, I personally believe and said what I said. So yeah, it's just it's just an interesting it's an interesting concept and uh, thought experiment, if you will, to think about. So anyway. With that being mentioned, I hope y'all had a good listen and um, 
I'm on my way to the uh, gym right now. Um, and I hope everybody has a uh, beautiful day. Thank you very much. I'm Binge Well Done. And I hope you like this uh, new webcam setup. It's a lot better than what I had before. And uh, it does work well at night. But I guess if you have a bumpy road, it's going to be a little bumpy altogether. So anyway, with that being mentioned, everyone have a beautiful day. Thank you again for your time. I'm Binge Well Done. Check me out. Peace.